Why the conflict in Amhara is a powder kick. Hello and welcome. I am Afimea Yale and this is News Analytica. Over the past month, the Amhara region has transformed from a place of discontent into a hotbed of conflict, escalating into a heavily armed confrontation. Just this Tuesday, the UN Human Rights Office reported that clashes between Ethiopia's military and militia men in the Amhara region have tragically claimed the lives of 183 individuals, with over a thousand more arrested nationwide. Meanwhile, the military command post established to oversee the state of emergency in the region said that on the 26th of August, the precipice of destruction and disintegration have been averted. A fortnight prior, the same military command post had announced the completion of phase one of its operations and declared the transitioning to phase two, leaving out the details of this phase. However, just a week after announcing phase two, a change in leadership unfolded. Yilik al Kafialo, the fifth president within the last five years, tendered his resignation, making way for the appointment of Araga Kabeda as the sixth regional president since 2018. In times such as these, past experience has taught us that matters often escalate into the devastating unknown. It is not unreasonable to think this situation is a powder keg on a short fuse. In today's analysis, we delve into the heart of this turmoil, examining its roots, the current situation, and far-reaching implications that extend beyond Ethiopia to the Horn region and the continent at large. The ongoing conflict in the Amhara region seems to mirror the preceding Tigray conflict. Yet, beneath the surface, it reveals a wave of complex political issues and feelings of marginalization. Barely nine months have elapsed since the Pretoria Peace Agreement brought closure to the Tigray War in November of 2022. Now, however, the Amhara region takes center stage in a new chapter of strife. And both conflicts share a common backdrop. Ethnic politics etched into Ethiopia's fabric over three decades ago has effectively molded governance along ethnic lines. In a nation where ethnic rights take precedence over individual rights, every issue, be it social, political or administrative is navigated through this prism. And this prism decides how each ethnic tension is explained. Historical grievances and territorial disputes between Tigray and Amhara regions also makes it seem like this is a continuation of the conflict in the Tigray region. However, it would be wrong to label the conflict identical to the Tigray war. While the Tigray conflict unfolded from the actions of political elites and cascaded down to affect the community, the Amhara conflict erupted from within the community, disrupting the original governance structure. The conflict lacks centralized leadership or unified demands, obstructing avenues for meaningful negotiation. At its core lies the involvement of local Fano fighters, engaging Ethiopian Defense Forces, who answer the call of the regional government to regain control of the region. The resignation of President Yilik al Kafialo and the appointment of Araga Kabeda as the new regional president has done little to quell the ongoing violence. Despite a plea for dialogue from religious, civic, and political institutions, substantive conversations have so far remained elusive. While authorities at regional and federal levels express willingness to engage in dialogue, they categorically reject any armed struggle. Given the nation's recent history of grappling with the debilitating civil war and simultaneous battles against liberation fronts and al Shabaab insurgency, such a stance is understandable. However, the absence of a clear-cut leadership structure within its uprising, the government is now at crossroads. Should it employ coercive measures to quash the turmoil or address the underlying grievances fueling the conflict? While the use of force might have merits, its repercussions could be dire, potentially fracturing an already fragile nation. Recent history, as exemplified by the Tigray conflict, underscores the unpredictable nature of military interventions particularly in a hostile region that is disgruntled and seems to have given its support to the militia. It is a daunting task for any military force in the world. As history has shown, the U.S. spent 20 years and over a trillion dollars to replace the Taliban with a better armed and battle-hardened Taliban. Similarly, Russia's ongoing conflict in Ukraine, lasting over a year and a half, serves as a testament to the unpredictability of such engagements. These are the number one and two, two military forces in the world. Ethiopia is ranked 49 in the world and fifth in Africa according to global firepower. 
If history is any indication, the most likely outcome of the conflict in the Amhara region is a prolonged and devastating war that breaks the back of the country already on the age of economic collapse. A peaceful solution isn't only vital for Ethiopia's internal stability, but also holds paramount importance for the entire Horn of Africa. The region is full of disputes over borders and sensitive geopolitical entanglements, each waiting for a spark to ignite a wider conflict. The Tigray region is embroiled in a long-standing conflict with neighboring Eritrea, while the Amhara region has border disputes with Sudan, a nation grappling with its own civil conflict. Moreover, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, situated in the Benshangal region, holds implications for Egypt's national security. The Gambela region is shadowed by security concerns stemming from its proximity to South Sudan, while Somalia's ties to security elements in the Somali regional state bring its own set of intricacies. The Afar region's cultural affinity with Djibouti, with ethnic Afar people making up 35.4% of Djibouti, is notable considering Djibouti's strategic importance hosting five superpower military bases. The proximity of this region to Yemen's prolonged conflict involving Yemenis, Saudis, Iranians, and Emiratis presents yet another dimension to this volatile landscape. As the situation stands, a swift and peaceful resolution to the Amhara conflict isn't just advisable, but mandatory. The ramifications extend far beyond Ethiopia's borders, holding the potential to fracture a region already brimming with tensions. The specter of disaster looms over five neighboring countries, collectively harboring more than 194 million people, a significant portion of which, 62%, reside within Ethiopia itself. Moreover, the Amhara region alone accounts for 18% of this population, underscoring its pivotal role. In conclusion, it is not an exaggeration to say that the Amhara conflict teeters on the age of a powder keg, threatening the fragile stability of the entire Horn of Africa. This is a moment that demands a collective effort to defuse tensions, safeguard lives, and uphold regional security. That is all for today. Thank you for watching and make sure to join us again tomorrow for another edition of News Analytics.